uh, Karen Gion, uh, you were shop steward during the anti-apartheid strike. I certainly was shop steward um, during the, the anti-apartheid strike and I mean that's 30 years ago um, and that strike lasted two years and nine months and it's only today that we're actually being recognised uh, for the contribution that we made to the anti-apartheid struggle and in actual fact the Irish government was the first Western government to actually ban South African goods and that wasn't because of the Irish government, that was because of the Dunstore's anti-apartheid strike. But your contribution was recognised by Nelson Mandela? Oh absolutely, I mean when Nelson Mandela came out of prison a year later he came to Ireland and he specifically asked to meet the Dunst workers because he had heard about the strike while he was in prison and he actually told us that that kept him going to know that other workers workers were being uh, supportive of what he was going to do and about the black people and the black trade unionists in South Africa and he met us and talked to us and it was just incredible that he acknowledged that long before anybody else did. So there was something else for young Irish yeah. shop workers to have such an impact internationally? Absolutely, I mean when that strike started um, we knew, and we've always said this, we knew very little about South Africa but that changed very quickly because we began to learn quite a lot about South Africa and it turned from not being, a, from being a union instruction to being something that we would never, even if the union had have instructed us, go back and hand South African goods until South Africa was free. You're here today, there's a brand new plaque outside Dunstores in Henry Street. Yeah. How special is that to you? Um, to say that that plaque is special to me and the rest of the strikers is, words can't even describe how special it means. You know, for the first time in 30 years we're being recognised for such a contribution that we made. I mean, we were only very young at the time. There was only 11 of us in Henry Street, 10 young women and one young man. And we managed to change government policy. Imagine if all the workers today came together, what we could do for this country. There's names of all the strikers on the plaque and there's there one other name mentioned. Yeah, and that was very, very important to us, that not only the strikers be recognised, but also our dear friend and comrade Brendan Archibald, who was our union official back in the day. And if it wasn't for Brendan, that strike wouldn't have continued. He may have been a union official, but he was much more than that to us. And it wasn't a nine to five job for Brendan. It was 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever we needed him. And he showed such a commitment to us and such a loyalty to us that we knew the strike could never be complete without his name being included, because he is part of our strike. And he passed away. Unfortunately, Brendan passed away last December, and it's very sad that he wasn't here, obviously, today to celebrate with us. But his family, Rosaline, his two sons, Michael and Dylan, and the rest of Brendan's uh, extended family were here to celebrate and remember Brendan as he was so much part of our struggle. We're filming this for the Foblock, and I think yeah. the Foblock had a special oh, part. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if it wasn't for the Foblock and people involved there, I mean, we were only 11 and we were trying to man a picket line you know, six days a week, sometimes seven. And people from on Fudluck used to come down and support us on the picket line, whether it was at night. We did occupy the store once and they helped us with that. And if it wasn't for that type of support, we wouldn't have been able to continue. <laughs> you mentioned the fact that of the, the example that's shown there and what can be shown today. Absolutely, I mean, I think it's extraordinary that we're standing outside Dunn stores in Henry Street in 2015 and the workers in Dunn's are still struggling with their employer. I mean, 30 years ago we did have permanent contracts, we did, there was no such thing as zero hour contracts, yet today, 2015, you have all of the workers of Dunn struggling against the company that we, who will not back down. And I say to the Irish government, now is your chance to take a lead and change the legislation, the employment legislation, so that the likes of Dunn stores and other employers cannot treat workers like that. I mean, if you want all workers to be part of this society more than contribute, how can you expect them to contribute when they're getting zero-hour contracts? They can't even raise enough funding to get a loan to buy anything. So I'm asking the Irish government, and it's, there's half of the government is the Labour Party, and they're supposed, supposed to be representing workers. Now is your time to act. The uh, massive rally on June the 6th um, for the Dunn Stores workers to support them and they will be marching to the headquarters 
of Dunn's Doors were Margaret Heffernan, who is in charge of Dunn's now, and I would be asking everybody to come out and support that, so that people can show the solidarity of workers of Dunn's Doors, but also remember, if it's happening in Dunn's, it's happening in other places.